Buckle Up is the Junk Monk Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Junk Monk Podcast. I'm your host, Candace Sloan, who you know from Instagram at Hardens and Hard Hats. And I'm Noah, your co host, you know from right now. If this is your first time listening, let us fill you in. We are picking up where the Drunk Monk podcast left off, hosted by Keiko again and Will S. Choi. I was a big fan of their podcast and was really sad to see they stopped their show, so I decided to pick it up, and I managed to find me a co-host. Okay, Will and Keiko did their show a little drunk, and so we're going to do our show with a little junk. So I've got my Lunky Charms here, my little junk food. And I have some Tutti Fruity popcorn, which is very interesting. It's got all different flavors, and I'm digging it. Also, you must know, I have seen every episode of Monk. I'm a huge fan. I started watching it in about 2007, and for the most part, watched it as it aired. I've seen the pilot episode and those we've done on the show, and a few scattered here and there in different seasons. So, if you're ready to start the show, Toby, take it away. All right, so, if you notice that different transition there... This is a little bit of a special episode because we are actually going to recap episodes 401 through 405. Mm -hmm. And um, why are we doing this? Because Will and Keiko, they've already done these episodes on their show, The Drunk Monk Podcast. So we are going to follow the format of our other recap episodes, 1, 2, and 3. How we're going to do that is we're going to go start with episode 1, of course, tell you what happened our likes and our dislikes, and we're going to rate this episode. So that way, when we go into our season four recap, we will have a more comprehensive list of episodes, knowledge of the episodes. They'll be fresh in our minds. And Noah had never seen them before. So there's that. Yeah. So basically, this is like a mini recap. That is correct. All right. So are we ready for our first one? Yeah. I'm going to pop a little crunchy crunch, though. I need some. Oh. Like, my my junk is very interesting. My mother actually sells popcorn, which she does more than sell popcorn. But <laughs> That's all she does. <laughs> her whole life. Long, <laughs> Candace's long line of, of popcorn, popcorn sellers. Yep. <laughs> no, but she, she got this new uh, popcorn company that she has, and there's all kinds of different popcorns in this one bag. So there's, like... Cherry, lemon, orange, green apple, and raspberry, blueberry, all kinds of stuff. So, okay. Um, so we're gonna start off with season four, episode one, which is Mister Monk in the Other Detective. Candace, summation, please. All right. In the opening scene, we see a man stealing diamonds from a jewelry store. He seems to be under distress, and we see that he is when two masked men give him his dog back. A security guard sees what's happening, tries to intervene, but one of the assailants takes off his mask, then kills the guard and the man with the dog. Next, we see the gang on the scene investigating when a notoriously incompetent P.I. named Marty Eels shows up to help. The captain tries to shoo him away, but Marty immediately begins finding clues that lead them to important evidence. Monk is bewildered by his detection skills and eventually is even kicked off the case when Marty finds one of the criminals and the jewels. It turns out Marty was cheating, as Monk had suspected. He had gotten the information of the crime from his mother, who was a quality control operator, and had overheard the two criminals while they were on hold. Eel's plan goes awry when the unapprehended suspect kidnaps his mom and ties her up to a pier. Monk is once again the hero when they rescue the mother just before high tide, and order is restored again. So, that was Mr. Monk and the other detective. Kiddus, what did you like? Okay, so as we know, Jason Alexander is in this episode, right? He's guest starring as Marty Eels. And I think they actually did a really good job of making Marty this, like, likable slash unlikable character. I know the first few times that I've watched it through, I'm like, oh my gosh, I roll. But when I... It's funny, when I dissect these episodes like this, I realize, like... Yeah, he actually is a likable character. He's obviously very annoying to Monk. And to you as the audience, you're like, oh my gosh, like, you know he's yeah. cheating. You know yeah. he's cheating. But when you watch it back and you know he's cheating because you've seen it before, it gives you a different, like, lens where you get to see the funny stuff that he does. Like, smelling the dog poop or uh, sniffing the, the dog. The human lie detector, when he eats the mud... And so, you know what I mean? So when you go yeah. back and you get to watch it, you have this different perspective of like, okay, yeah, he was funny. And I was, I was actually about to say that, like, 
uh, as weird as that sounds, but I was exactly about to say that. Because I took these notes when I first watched it, but then we rewatched it for you, right? Mm-hmm. So how good at being terrible at his job Marty is? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. It's like a different lens. Yeah. We have the scene where Monk goes to Marty's office and Marty says, oh, have a seat. And Monk says, it's okay, I'm not fine. Like, did, yeah. did he just say he's not fine? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And then also in that scene, Monk sees the certificate yeah. that he has on his wall that's like to beach something college or something mm-hmm. like that. And Monk says, is this a correspondence school? And then Marty's like, yeah, yeah, it's fully accredited. Oh, where did you go to school? And Monk's like, Berkeley. And he's like, that's a good school as well. I hear it's fully accredited too. <laughs> I love that. Those I got those are my those are some quotes I have there. Yeah. I love how Natalie kind of sticks up for Monk in this episode. She's kind of when no one really believes Monk, she's there to comfort him and kind of be like, Hey guys, well, he's not like completely and utterly stupid. Yeah, I I agree with that. I didn't have that down, but there are other episodes where we'll, we'll actually see later in this episode where Natalie doesn't believe him. And she and she yeah. does Episode believe five. him. Yeah, she mm-hmm. does believe him in this one. I think she even makes a comment like, "Nobody believes me except for me and my boss," or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, that's awesome!" Like, go yeah. Natalie. Brownie points for Natalie there. Yep. And kind of to piggyback off of that, I have just Monk when he keeps repeating, "He's cheating. He's cheating." Yeah. No, he's cheating. Mm-hmm. And obviously, again. We know Monk, he's right, he's always right, he's going to be right about this, but you just, like, love his intuitiveness to just know, because, like, okay, so Stottlemyre points out, Monk, you do these crazy, weird things all the time, and I never understand how you do it, and I never see it, so maybe he's just doing that, and you can't see it, but Monk, being the knowledgeable person that he is, is like, no, because... There's merit behind the things that I'm saying. So when he says something and then explains kind of how he came to figure that out, you know, oh, okay, that makes sense. But when Marty smells the dog poop and says, oh, it's fresh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then sniffs the dog, he sees the dog from across the parking lot and is like, oh, those are Oakland tags. Again, Monk could have seen that, but if the dog was up closer... yeah. That would make sense. Mm -hmm. Marty seeing it from all the way across the parking lot is something that does not have any merit to it. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's kind of, I feel like that's, that's how we know Monk is right. Besides Monk being right. It's like, yeah, but Marty just keeps saying random stuff and is, is magically right about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure Marty had a sort of like a, here's what happened. He had his own, I think he said that. But it wasn't, like, oh, yeah, an actual, good. like, summation, like, mm-hmm. where they show the things. But he's just like, here's what happened. Blah, 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 blah. So I thought that was kind of cool. I think it, I, I think you're talking about the very first scene, possibly, where Monk starts to say something. And Marty's like, no, no, here, here, here's what happened. Here's what happened. Uh, and then he, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy had the dog. It was a hostage. And blah, blah, blah. And again, he knows all this stuff mm-hmm. that he hasn't even investigated yet. He's just... Lo- the worst. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty good. Um, do you have anything else? Um, I like the scene where Natalie puts Julie up to something and oh. kind of sets up like a mini mystery for Monk, and so sweet. It's so nice, and Monk's like, "You set this up because that camera isn't wet, and you watered these plants this morning." He solves this mini case, and he's like, "You've been lying to me." And then Natalie's like, ah, oh, Mr. Monk, you're too good. And then Julie's like, my mom put me up to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some Julie sass there. So funny. That was funny. And if I was Natalie, I would have been like, but see, you knew we were lying to you. Yeah. That's, that's like good detection on its own. Yeah. But yeah, Mr. Monk wasn't hearing that. Yep. Also related to that would be whenever he goes to Dr. Kroger's office because he's so down on mm-hmm. him and Marty. Yeah. At odds or whatever. 
And Dr. Kroger says, okay, Adrian, well, do you just want to give up? And Monk says, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's that bridge scene? That's funny. We're I didn't so, write that so down. It's so funny. I didn't write that down either. It's yeah, so Natalie funny. Natalie comes in and he's like, you know, I'm going to take this job at Fulton College. And she's like, no, I'm not going to let you do that. And he's like, oh, because he asks, says, like, take me to the interview or something. Mm-hmm. And she's like, no, I'm not taking you. And he's like, okay, I'll drive myself. And she's like, you're not going to drive yourself. There's a bridge. Do you even have a license? And then he's like, I'm going to go. Uh, she's like, there's a bridge. And he's like, yeah, I have a blindfold. That's what <laughs> I have. She's like, you're going to be driving. And he's like, I can make no. it. I can. He's like, oh, I can make it. <laughs> And then, of course, that's when we hear... The operator chime in. Oh, my daughter goes to Fulton, or whatever. What did she say? My so, daughter goes yeah, to Fulton? Yeah, something like that. There's, I know, the, I know of a way to go around the bridge. And then Monk's like, oh, you could hear us this whole time? Here's what happened. Boom. Do you think cake. that that's, like, accurate? Like, do you think that they're actually, like, people monitoring? No, I don't think... Because I had a lot of time to think about this, obviously. No. I asked my mom, and she was like... I don't think so. So, mom never lies. <laughs> Just ask Marty Eels. <laughs> That's true. Mama's boy. Yeah, I don't know about that. I I am very aware of when I am on hold. And sometimes if, I, if I'm frustrated, I will just explain, like, my problem to, to, to them. To the music. <laughs> oh. I'm like, so see, this is ridiculous because I've been on hold for 20 minutes because they messed up and blah, 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 blah. Just in case someone's on the other line, <laughs> even though I'm almost certain the quality control people have nothing to do with that, like, company. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure. Like, you're calling, you know, AT&T and someone from where Timbuktu is, like, listening to your conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I like how Monk is acting so childish and... He's just like, oh, he's cheating. He's cheating. And then Captain Sotomayor says, Monk, this isn't the fourth grade. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Um, I think I'm actually done. I think so. So what did you not like about this episode? Marty Eels is very, 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 very annoying. Okay. I don't like... Okay. I, the more you... The deeper you get into the episode, it's like, ugh, this guy. You know, mm-hmm. you start out and you're like, oh, he's a little underdog guy. But the farther you go, it's, he's very annoying. Yeah. Okay, so my Marty note I have here is that, which I kind of already explained, but we know that these things don't make any sense, what he's saying. So I feel like it would have been better if he was psychic, but we've already had in like episode two of this series. Oh, yeah. Mr. Monk and the psychic And then also, I'm sure you had on at the same exact time was Psych. psych. Yeah. So it was probably like, okay, come on now. But Mm -hmm. just just for the logic of it, that I feel like all of these things that he's just blurting out that don't really make any sense, he could just use the cop out and say, I'm psychic. So I don't know. I mean, that's kind of a, that's kind of a silly one, but I just feel like every time I watch it, I feel like it would, I'm like, it was, this would make more sense if he just said... Well, the reason that I know these things isn't because I'm intuitive or because I'm a good detective, because nobody believes he's a good detective. They all know that he isn't. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like it would be make more sense if he was, you know. Sick. Yeah, that makes sense. I was, the crime was kind of like easily dissected. Like what you were saying earlier about Monk, it would have just taken him a little longer. And it would have been way easier. Monk would have gotten it done. And they wouldn't have needed Marty's mom, blah, blah, blah. If Monk would have done it, he probably would have figured out, like, oh, yeah, exactly. his partner's there. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, I thought about that, too. The crime was easily dissected, basically. Yeah. I, I, I understand that completely. Um, this one's super random, but in the very first scene where the assailant takes his mask off, Mm -hmm. that's just rude. Like, if you're already going out of your way to kidnap a dog, make a guy go steal some diamonds for you, why shoot the security guard then and take off your mask? That way you have witnesses and you're like, oh, you saw my face. Now I have to kill you. Yeah. Like, I get it. He's a criminal. He's a bad guy. So it's like, what kind of 
moral compass do I think he should have? Yeah. But they usually do that because it's an accident. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, no, we have to kill him. He saw our faces. Yeah. He takes off his mask on purpose and then just kills them both. Yep. That's obviously very nitpicky, but I'm like, rude. (laughs) I just, I just, (laughs) that's the first thing I wrote down. Rude. Yeah. Just drive away, dude. Just drive away. Like, just drive away. That's all I have. Okay, so I have one more thing. So, you know the scene where, okay, for one, I didn't write this down. I thought you were going to. When he trips over the body. <laughs> because oh, he's yes. He's in the forest With and he straight up just trips over the, what does he say? Oh, I'm 116th Cherokee. And then he uses the stick yeah. to navigate his way through the forest. And then he uses it. And then he he's it's so strong. See, that's kind of the psychic thing. You see how they had to throw something in there like that? Like, yeah. how is he going to find this body? I'm 116th Cherokee. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, look, his body is in an unnatural position. He's obviously pointing to his watch. That like, is so... What do you think that could mean? Like, um, you know, like a watch or like Rolex in our, or... In our uh, dying... In his dying uh, breath, he was trying to tell us something. Yeah. And then he's like, a uh, dial? And then Randy, out of thin air, is like... Oh, Andy Dial? That guy, he was just released from prison a couple of weeks ago. Okay, again, already a stretch. We know that Marty knows, Mm -hmm. you know, on rewatching, obviously. We know that Marty knows exactly what's going on anyway. But Randy is a lieutenant and he knows of a guy who just got released from jail. Do they know those types of things? Is that... Is that That's a thing? That's not important for them. You know no. what I'm saying? They wouldn't know that. Like, how? Like, unless that was, like, one of the most important cases of your career, you would not know just some average random robbery criminal yeah. getting out of jail and then put it together like, ooh, a uh, dial? Like, oh, Andy dial? Like, mm, no. Too far. Also, how... This is what I was going to say. I forgot what I meant. But how the heck does Marty, like... Is come up with these clues besides the dumb ones that are like, oh, smelling poop. Oh, go this way, blah, 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 right? How does he make up that dumb thing where he's like, oh, the dial and Andy dial? Yes. How creative would you have to be to be lying to the cops right now and on the spot be like, okay, I have to make them come to the conclusion that it was Andy dial or make it seem like I have yeah. and... Just come up with that, like, oh, well, watch, and he's pointing to that, and it's a lot of skill. Well, yeah, that's true, because he knew all of the things, but he didn't know the guy was going to be wearing a watch. Yeah. And then be poor. Do you think he, do you don't think he went and tampered with the body, do you? No. Because, for one, he's already, what would that be? I don't know if it's be obstructing justice, but he's already, like, basically obstructing justice by knowing this information and not going to the police. Mm-hmm. You, if you if you know something like that, you have to go to the police. Like, somebody has stolen, and then somebody has also died. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I feel like he would have to have known... Like you said, he either was either really, really creative and came up with that on the spot because he didn't know the guy was wearing a watch, or he went yeah. and... Like, yeah, no. So he would have had to have come up with that on the spot and then be like, oh, hopefully... Lieutenant Disher remembers this guy from... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, yes, this doesn't make sense. I'm and sorry, this doesn't make sense. Also, also, besides the the fact that you probably don't do that with control operators, right? But also, the fact that they get on and, hey, let's summarize the whole crime right now. Like, even if you don't have the phone in your hand, why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Monk's like, so they were summarizing it, right? right. Uh, what? And saying every it's... single detail about yeah. everything while they were on the phone. Exactly. Yeah. Remember when we hid the body in that specific <laughs> place? That was so cool, dude. Yeah. Like, there's no way. We dumped the ski masks in the drain yeah. and the gun and the thing and the thing and the exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good point. That's exactly. A, that's a really good point. Oh, yeah. So, uh, are you ready to rate this episode? Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. We're going to mix up our little 
rating scales and kind of mush them together. Yes. So we're going to do our crazy scale. Except there's no... We're just taking the element from the crazy scale that out of 10... What? Out of 10 what, right? Do we rate this episode? So like out of 10... I put 10 bags of dog poo. Mm, that's kind of gross. I didn't sniff it. For, <laughs> for me, out of 10 Oakland tags. Oh, okay. Nice. Yep. So now you get the gist, right? So out of 10 what? And then what do we rate this episode out of 10 what? Out of 10 what? I rate this episode. Oh, wait, not 10 what? Out of out of 10 <laughs> Oakland tags. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Out of 10 clang thuds was I my like, original one. Yeah, out I of like 10 that. clang thuds. I'll go with that. Clang, too. thud, clang, thud, clang, thud. thud. Clang. It is a thud clang. 4 out of 10. Four out of ten. Oh, yikes. Okay, so I'm going to like do it. out of ten thud clangs, I am going to rate it a 6.5. You know, a little bit better than above average, right? So above a six, but not not quite a seven. I feel like a seven is more of like a an average good monk episode. I'd say this is just point five under that. Um, I know a lot of people like Jason Alexander. Um, we've already got a... We got an Instagram message about when Noah originally made the comment a while back that he did not like the other detective. Somebody was like, what? No way. So, I don't like it. I'm sorry, you guys. Yeah. Okay, but to be fair, also, Noah has never seen Seinfeld, so he doesn't really know who Jason Alexander yeah. is. So it's like when you don't, it's a very interesting way to think about it. Like if you don't know that someone's supposed to be really funny and is famous, but they're also, you know part of the scheme mm -hmm. you're like you have just a different view of them like yeah. oh this guy's whatever and you're like no no it's jason alexander like he's funny and they're like oh okay whatever you know yeah. so just a different just a different perspective but sense. i for jason alexander i thought he was funny i liked it i liked the guest star that's obviously what they were going for with the season premiere yeah. to have a big guest star so mm -hmm. i think it wasn't bad yeah are you ready for season four episode two Mr. Monk goes home again. In the opening scene, we see a bald man follow an armored car driver out to his truck from the supermarket. When it cuts back to the market, it turns to chaos as shoppers scatter from gunfire. In the parking lot, the driver is being shot by the bald man point blank in the chest over and over and over. While on the scene, Monk receives a call from his brother Ambrose to come home because their father is visiting that evening, Halloween night. When they are at Ambrose's, a strange trick-or-treater dressed as Frankenstein's monster rifles through the candy and knocks Ambrose to the floor. When the same monster steals candy from Julie's friends, they know it's connected. Monk must now escort Julie to get more candy, and while out, he discovers a dead pigeon, the same pigeon that was at the crime scene earlier that day. He thinks the pigeon has been poisoned. While the captain tests the bird, Adrian goes back and waits for the results. It comes back as tetrachloridrine. A very strong poison with no antidote. And a man named Gilstrap had been caught stealing that same drug. Monk remembers Gilstrap from trick-or-treating. The wife said she ate a Neptune bar every night before bed. Monk solves the case. Gilstrap had injected a batch of Neptune bars with poison and put them into circulation so that no one would suspect him when his wife died from the candy. Gilstrap had overkilled the guard so no one would think he was poisoned. Ambrose had one of the bars and was targeted when Gilstrap was trying to get the bars back after being caught stealing the poison. Ambrose has a close call with an old Neptune bar, but all is well in the end. Whew. Nice. That was Mr. Monk. Dang, that's harder than it looks. <laughs> well, Dang. also, my handwriting is... Yeah, that's true. Well, not so much the handwriting as the crossing out and the arrows. <laughs> I like to write in pen for some reason, and I make mistakes. Yeah, Monk would not be pleased. <laughs> okay, Candace, what did you like about this episode? Well, I didn't like anything about this episode. I loved everything about oh, this yeah. episode. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I can't even with Ambrose. Yeah. I literally wrote in my notes, Ambrose, ah, <laughs> and mm -hmm. a big heart. Yeah. I love Ambrose so much. His and Tony Shalhoub's acting is, of course, on point. Yep. But I noticed right when... I was so excited for Noah to watch this episode. Their body language is so great. I don't I don't even know how to explain it. You obviously have to watch body language. But they're also their chemistry. But whenever they see each other, 
And I don't want to get this mixed up with the three pies because we watched that like right after. Yeah. But this was when he goes up to the front door. He he sees that Natalie is there and Sharona's gone. Mm-hmm. But their body language where they're both they both have like hunched over shoulders. And Monk doesn't always like kind of hunch like that, but he has a little bit of hunched shoulders where they, I guess maybe they are questioning whether they're going to hug or not. So they're both just standing there like arms straight down, like very awkward at their sides. And again, it's like, are are we going to hug or are we like, it's just like, you know, that in each other's presence, they have that energy, that Monk energy. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. It's just crazy to watch it back and just be like, like, okay, here we go. And you're like, right from the get go, before they even say words, it's like, look at them. Just look at their, look at their body. Yeah. It's so great. Um, anyways, but especially uh, Tony Shalhoub also, like Ambrose has a lot of lines in this episode, obviously, because Stranger Turo, they, they've got to give him everything they can. Yeah. But if you watch Tony Shalhoub, his subtleties are just spot on. I, I mean, you just, I don't know, even know how to explain it, but they're just spot on when you watch Ambrose is, is talking and Adrian always has a reaction to it. And most of it is nonverbal. Yeah. And so you, you just, you, you gotta watch it again. It's a great one. You gotta watch it. It is it. such a good it. episode. And my notes, Candace. Okay. I have Ambrose all bold with little squigglies mm-hmm. around it. Mm-hmm. So that's obviously, so I'm going to do another one. Ambrose likes Natalie. He's a little crush on her. It's so cute. So sweet. Okay, so obviously there's a lot of great quotes by Ambrose. Yep. The first one would be, oh, that's it. He asks if they're trick-or-treaters because he doesn't recognize Natalie. Oh, yeah. Right? So yeah. he asks, oh, you're, are you trick-or-treaters? And they're like, oh, no. And she says, well, I'm, uh, Julie says, oh, I'm a doctor. And he's like, no, you're a cardiologist. And yeah. like, I'm a doctor. He's like, no, you're a cardiologist. That's a cardiologist stethoscope. I wrote the manual for it. And she's like, okay, um, I guess I'm a cardiologist. And <laughs> he's like, that's okay. I made a mistake once. <laughs> I can't. Oh, my gosh. I can't with these quotes. This is too much. Okay. Do you have anything? So or do you funny. want me to just keep going? Keep on going. Okay. The This is so sad. The NIZMU Awards... They oh, won't. Yeah. They won't mail them. The awards. The awards he gets, and also they have the trick or treat contract where he opens the door and the kids say trick or treat, and he's like, okay, now by saying trick or treat, this means that we've entered a verbal contract. I'm giving you a treat, so you will not perform any tricks on this house or this property. It's so Ambrose, and it's so good. It's so funny. And it's it, it really is a monk thing to say. Yeah. Again, like it is a monk thing to say. Mm-hmm. And then also when he gets attacked by Frankenstein's monster, he's like, hey, get your hands out of there. Get your hands out of there. And he's like, and he pushes him down. And then Ambrose falls to the floor. And they're like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And then Ambrose is like, did he get more than one piece? (laughs) How is that not a complete? It is exactly (laughs) like the dentist whenever Monk is getting knocked out. And he's getting completely drugged. And he understands that he's getting drugged. Ambrose understands that he's getting hit mugged he's getting drugged he's getting mugged they both understand this but they both don't even care about what is happening to them and are just completely oblivious l- are completely like... oblivious to everything and our ambrose says did he t- only take one piece and monk says did you get, did you get the spot <laughs> oh my gosh i'm telling so you guys there's so many parallels that they did an amazing amazing job of making them basically the same person but yeah. Not and no. it's excellent. It all random kind of reminds me of uh Frasier, Niles and Frasier, mm-hmm. where it's like, really, do we need another character that's exactly like Frasier? And then Niles comes in and he's even funnier. And you're like, how? Mm-hmm. Like Frasier's the star of the show, but his brother is like, is yeah. the same person, but he takes his quirks and he makes them even more abundant and mm-hmm. extra and every. It's so yeah. I love I love that. So funny. Um, Ambrose and Monk do a little team up, and it's good to see those two brothers fighting alongside each other. It's fun to see. It's fun yeah. to watch. That is good. that's true. They actually team up whenever they're. Um, I, I feel like I had that written down somewhere, 
where they are sitting at the table and mm -hmm. Monk is, or Stottlemyer, when Stottlemyer's like, what do you guys got? And they like, whisper, 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 whisper. And they're like, yeah, we don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> that is so awesome. Okay, another thing is I put hashtag goals. Okay, his Halloween candy patterns. He tracks oh. the census and how many kids there were last year and all the weather patterns and all of this. I'm yes, like, oh my gosh, so, that is so goals. It is so cool. That is so me. Okay, and so. Stottlemyer is mean to him about it, and he's like, that's weird. And me and is like, what? That's so cool. That is so cool. Um, so for me, now I'm an adult, right? So I can't trick or treat, but I have trick or treaters at my house and I give out the full size candy bars because I want to be that house that everyone's like tells their friends about. Yeah. That's cool, right? Well, duh. So I do that. So I'm already extra about that. Uh -huh. And then this year, I did something that I thought was fun, and I put out my big marker board outside that's, like, framed, so it's, it looks nice, and I put it on an easel, and I had a candy bar menu, and so I had all the candy bars that we had in the bowl all listed, and so when the kids walked up, they were able to, when they were waiting, look at the board and see what candy bar that they wanted, and then as I ran out of candy bars, I would have to cross them out. And so that way, That's I didn't sick. erase them because then I was like, well, it's going to look like I just have two candy bars, you know? Uh -huh. So I just would cross them out. Like, people would be like, oh, man, she ran out of M&M's, you know? So that is me. That is totally goals. That is so I cool. That, so. Yeah. I also just really like Halloween specials. And it's fun they, to watch yeah. characters go through, uh, like, scary episodes where, you're, where you don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. I love Halloween specials. That's true. Whether it's just a simple, like, side thing in an episode where a character is just going trick-or-treating and that's just part of the show or whatever, or if it's something like this where it's all around the theme of Halloween, which I really love. Yeah, that's true, because you never really know where... Because it's a, it's a Halloween special, so all the rules essentially go out the window. Yeah. Like, something bad could happen or something scary could happen where normally that wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. And it's already a murder show. So yeah. you're like, what else are they going to do? Exactly. So, like Monk, when he's the safety patrol officer. Cross at the green, not in between. <laughs> <laughs> and then he also has a line where I say this line, not a lot, but I've been known to say it, but nobody ever gets it, so then I feel silly. But mm -hmm. I, I do it anyway. Whenever he doesn't grab the, the candy out of the bowl, and he's like, oh, no, I'm allergic. And she's like, you're allergic to candy? And he's like... I'm allergic to food that's been sitting in a bowl all night <laughs> that other people have been touching. <laughs> so funny. And then, do you remember what he... <laughs> do you remember what the lady says to him? She was like, oh, well, I guess we all have our little quirks. Monk thinks she's like a super weirdo. Yeah, because so it, because he we, said... We all have our little quirks. Yeah. She's, she's, she's yeah. like, I eat a Neptune bar every time uh, before I go to sleep. And she's like, well, we all have our little quirks, right? And he's like, I, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose we I suppose. do. And looks at, oh my gosh, she looks at her like she's a crazy lady. It's so, funny. It's so good. It's so good. It's so, so good. funny. <laughs> the irony is too much. Um, oh, there's my note about, I knew I wrote something about Natalie. Ambrose's maybe from Aww. Natalie. But it was so sweet. When she says, oh, it's real, it's complicated. I work for your brother. Aww. Things would just get messy. And he's like, oh, nope, just forget it. Never, no, I never said it. It never happened. Aww. And she's like, no, seriously, though. If I ever get another job, I hope you ask me again. And then he's like, wait, so you're not saying no. So you're saying maybe. And she's like, yeah. And he's like, do you mind if I tell my father when he gets here? That's oh, so sweet. <sighs> That's so sweet. I cry every time. Um, do you have anything else? Uh, no. Okay, I have two more things. One is Kiefer Sutherland, which you didn't know who he was, so it's funnier. It's kind of funnier if he knows, but you still laughed pretty good. When Randy's, um, he's like, oh, that sketch looks like Kiefer Sutherland. And he's like, oh, yeah, I guess it does. And he's like, uh, I mean, but we don't, like, that looks a lot like Kiefer <laughs> Sutherland. Do you think that before we put this out, we should contact Mr. Sutherland and tell him, you know, so, like, we don't want to bother him? And Captain Sotomayor's like... 
yeah, let's do that. And he's like, really? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Randy's like, do you think we should put a little thing at the bottom that says not Keith or Sutherland? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so That's so funny. Okay, and then my very last thing is, of course, the amazing scene where they have in the Aww. ambulance... Where they're all laughing. And they're, well, they're crying first they're, because I think everyone's going to die. Okay, and see, that would be an example of they could do anything in a yeah, Halloween episode. Yeah. They could kill Ambrose. They could We've seen Ambrose. Ambrose before. He could die. And him and his brother, you know, yes, they have problems, but they also could have closure at this point. Mm-hmm. And it's so sad. It's so and sad. Then, and then Monk's like, wait, is that a Neptune bar? And he's like, oh, yeah. And he's like, give me the wrapper from the other one. And he's like... This expired 11 months ago. And he's like, that's why it tasted funny. And they're that's like, why it tasted funny. They're and they're laughing. like, that's... Uh, they're they're laughing, laughing, laughing and crying. That's why it tasted so... funny. Oh my gosh, that scene. Too I much. absolutely cry every time at that scene. It is Every so freaking sad. time. Oh, okay. That's it. That's this it. episode is killer. Okay, okay, so what did you not like? Mm, I did not... Like, this is my only thing. So this guy's trying to cover up for this cop who just ate the Neptune bar, right? And because if the cop just drops that, everyone's going to be like, what the heck, he was poisoned. Mm-hmm. But if he gets shot five times, they're not going to test him for poison, mm-hmm. right? So he shoots him five times and then looks around. Oh, dee, dee. <laughs> and then is like, oh, oh, I'm scared. Oh, and then has to let it, the whole audience know that he's scared and stays there for good four seconds. And he's like, and then runs. Not very fast. <laughs> right? He like waddles. He, he like waddles. He like waddles. Exactly. So this guy, why did the killer just run after the cop shooting? Ba 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 ba. Sprint. He had to yeah. look around and sweat all over the place and, oh, what am I going to do? Right? Okay, I'll get you with another plot hole. Monk picks up a dead pigeon. Yeah. No. We were both like, uh... That would not happen. We thought he was going to make Julie do it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Julie, pick that up. (laughs) Yeah. That would have been funny, actually. Yeah. Um, And then she could have been, like, standing next to the cop car, like, rolling her eyes, like, Mr. Monk, please stop (laughs) holding this. That would have been cute. Okay, another one. Let Randy go trick-or-treating. Come on, Stottlemyre. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Why do you let Monk... Well, I mean, he's not the boss of Monk, so that's why. Natalie made Monk go. Oh, yeah. Natalie's the boss of Monk. <laughs> Natalie is the boss of Monk, yeah. Okay, do you have Which anything... We're going to oh. talk about in the season four episode, because I'm mad. Because Natalie thinks she's the boss okay, of Monk. Okay, whoa, hang on, hang on. Whoa, calm down, calm down. Do you have anything else? No. Okay, I have one more thing, which is kind of honestly what I also did like, so I just oh kind of two for that. Okay, so such deep-seated anger from their father... And they blame themselves for him leaving. Yeah. Like, it's so sad. It's and, so sad. but then the anger that they feel for each other, I guess, is the part that I don't like. But then the scene is still so good. Yeah. Because Monk gets, age, or Ambrose gets mad and he throws the candy at Monk while Monk's sitting at the dinner table. Mm-hmm. And then Monk gets up and goes up to the study and starts throwing stuff into bags yeah. and like if you watch that scene again you can just feel that like anger tension. and tension yeah. yeah it's big time so again that's something like yes i don't like that they have that anger but also that scene though it is makes so good. for good scene yeah yeah and that's also we see that in the three pies as well but it i feel like they kind of wrap up the three pies yeah in this one because like oh adrian is a brother boom what about his father what about his mother they're like, our mother died years ago, and our father never came back. Yeah. Right? So I think that's nice that they tied it with a little bow. Yeah. And hopefully, I don't know, but hopefully they'll retouch on this. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think I am good to go on that. So do you want to rate this episode? Yes. Okay, Candace. What would you rate this episode out of 10 Neptune bars? Well, Noah... Out of 10 Nizam U Awards. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, I liked this one. Dang, that's good. 
Nizamures. That's good. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to revert back to my original scale, right? I kind of take a break because it's a little complicated to say 10 point something. So I'm giving myself some slack on that one. But I'm going back to the scale. No, you're not. Because out of two tens. Oh, that's good. This that's good. episode that's good. gets two tens. It gets 20 Nizamu awards. Dang. Two sets of ten Nizemi Awards. One, one ten for Monk, one ten for Ambrose. Two sets of Nizemi Awards. Uh, I went there, guys. I completely and utterly just went there. That is my first two tens ever. Yeah, no, that's a ten. Yeah. That's a ten out of ten. ten you got ten. it? Yeah. You too? Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. We need some junk time music. We need some, no, what we need is some applause. Thank you, Toby. Thank you for clapping. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Toby, for clapping. Thank you, Toby. You're that's too much. A, that's a good one. You're too much. Okay, so let's move on to our next episode. Let's keep scooting. Mr. Monk stays in bed. So this is Mr. Monk stays in bed. In the open, we see a pizza man delivering food to Monk's apartment. Natalie receives the wrong change from the man and goes to chase him down. When she finds his car, the delivery boy slumps out of the car dead. As they investigate his murder, another case comes up of a missing judge. When the police drop the pizza case to search for the judge and Monk comes down with the flu, Natalie takes it upon herself to investigate. She discovers that the man who came to her door wasn't the actual pizza boy. Then she visits the last stop before hers the night of the murder. This leads her to the home of Reggie Dennison, a lawyer who is having an affair with the missing judge. Natalie is hot on the trail and breaks into Dennison's house. She finds a missing shower curtain and a bloody thumbprint. She also drops her phone with Monk on the line, and Dennison picks it up. Monk gives his summation to the killer by accident, and this leads Dennison and Natalie to the recycling plant to search for the pizza box with his fingerprints. Monk saves Natalie, the police save Monk, and they are able to find the pizza box thanks to Julie's Get Well Soon musical card to Monk. <laughs> really good episode. Oh, this it actually episode. was a really good episode. I... I, I didn't remember this episode being so good. I was, I, I just long story short, yeah. There's some massive surprises and lots of character development, yeah. which is good. So, Candace, what did you like about this episode? Well, of course, you've got the level check. The level, level. check in level. That's right. Absolutely. Boom. We use number one. Basically, every day of my life since I've seen this episode, every time I use a level, I say a level checking level. It's like. So and now, Noah, I know you will, too. It's so, so funny. It's very classic. Level checking level. Look. Yep. We've seen a Natalie episode, but this is... We've seen Natalie schemes, many Natalie schemes. But this is a full-blown Natalie scheme episode. That's true. Natalie yeah. goes, and she's Mr. Monk today. Yeah. Yeah. Natalie scheme. Okay, I have a Natalie fib. I, I put Natalie scheme, but it was very short. So I marked off the word scheme and put fib. When she goes to Dennison's house the first time, uh -huh. and she's like, oh, I just have a question. Are you busy? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm busy. And she's like, oh, okay. And then she realizes he's the guy. And, oh, yeah, And yeah, yeah. he realizes, she realizes he's the guy. And she's like, oh, uh, sorry to have bothered you. And he's like, oh, no, wait, wait, what is it? And she's like, oh, nothing. I just, I have a so missing cat. Funny. And he's like, oh, you do? I uh, I found a missing cat. It's it's in my basement. And she's like, oh, no, that's okay. Uh, it's it's not him. Yeah. And he's like, oh, what color is it? And he's like, oh, it's white. And she's like, oh, no, yeah, see, Snowflake is black. <laughs> he's like, Snowflake is black? And he's like, yeah. All right, so I got to go. <laughs> that was my Natalie fib. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, of course. Massive, massive, massive props to Monk in this episode. He is, his character development is amazing, and Monk tackles and beats up the fake delivery guy. Yep. Creepy man. The creepy, creepy Oh, man. yeah. If you watch, go watch that back. We all were like, whoa. Yeah. I don't know where Monk just flies and into the scene. He flies through. It's crazy. I put Super Monk. The, I wrote Super Monk, and then someone we were watching with it said, whoa, he just, like, Superman'd him. Yeah. And I was like, he did. He comes flying in like Superman. Like, what a boss, you know? Yeah. Um. Okay, this line gets me every single time. This is a Randy Disher line, okay? Natalie sees the dead body. Natalie says, how do you deal with that? And he's like, ah, 
you get used to it. And she's like, God, oh, that must be terrible. And he's like, yeah, it was at first, but then I get used to it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, that's the hardest part, you know, getting used to it. Something you never really get used to. <laughs> I'm sorry for the dead silence, but we oh can breathe. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, my Randy's gosh. So funny. Get, that line gets me every time. Oh my gosh. Every time. So it it really just got me again, and I said it. It wasn't even him. Oh my gosh. Okay. You have anything else? <sighs> I, I like how. Oh gosh. I like how Julie's card saves the day this episode. Yeah. Just the world's most annoying card. It's so... Uh, that, that's my dislike. I know. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Okay, so I think it's really cute that Julie takes care of Monk. She buys him the card. And she knows how to do the bags. Uh-huh. It's so cute. She's like, I know how to do it, Mr. Monk. And I've also seen someone sneeze before. <laughs> or blow his nose. He's like... Blow his nose. Look, look away, Julie. <laughs> look away. Turn around. I've seen look. someone blow their nose, Mr. Monk. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, then she he actually makes her turn around. So, basically, my overall arching theme was all of the aspects of Monk being sick. He's got the humidifier and the dehumidifier. He's got his alphabet soup that he has to eat in order. <laughs> He's got his double Ziploc bags for each individual Kleenex. Also, do you have anything else? Because I have... I do. Oh, okay, you can go ahead then. Okay. I, I, I have so, one more, so... Um, Monk has, like I said before, a lot of character development. That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, but how so? He really, like, stays in bed a lot, mm -hmm. which is a normal monk. But whenever he hears about Natalie, he cares about her and basically gets up right away and is like, Natalie, get out of there, Natalie, get out of there, and rushes to the scene, and I'm proud of him. Yeah, that's true. And also, bring me some cough drops. For real. Bring me some cough drops, Natalie. Okay, my last thing is, he thinks he has Ebola. <laughs> And she's so like, funny. no, Mr. Monk, you don't have Ebola. And he's like, yes, I have the fever and the headaches and the massive internal bleeding. <laughs> she's like, really? You have massive internal bleeding? <laughs> oh, That's it. Oh. I'm done. That's what I liked. That's funny. All right, Candace. What did you dislike? That card is horrendous. Ugh. But that card was definitely glitchy. Because they don't work when they're closed. The, yeah. The cards don't, you know, obviously, they don't work like that. And a 10-year battery? Heck no. They said that? Yes. <laughs> it comes with the, it comes with the battery, 10-year battery or something like that. Yeah. No. Oh. There's no way. But there's, also, it's a little bit of a plot hole besides the fact that they shouldn't have worked closed. There's no yeah. way a normal person, a.k.a. Natalie and Julie, wouldn't think that was annoying. Yeah. Like, if anything, on a normal day, I feel like maybe, like, Monk would get a kick out of that and then give that to one of them or something, and then yeah. they'd be like, Mr. Monk, this is annoying. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, I feel like it was almost out of character, but yeah, that, whatever. True. Yeah. Um, when Natalie finds the body, she does not do a good job acting. Yeah. She's like... <laughs> right? Okay, like, also... Cue be, girl scream. Mm, right? To be fair, though... This is, I mean, not, this doesn't really contradict what you just said, but she's towards the beginning of her run on the show. Yeah. So she's never probably, that's, that hasn't happened to her before. Where yeah. As the series obviously goes on, she's going to be more used to seeing dead people. Like she has that conversation with Randy. Yeah. So that's just her like reaction to, you know, yeah. the first time I guess that happens to her. But that's true. Uh, do you have any more? Um, yes. I Two more. Okay, I have two more also. Oh, okay. okay, so this is a tough one. Where Monk, he did have a point when Natalie says that she needs to do her job. Whenever she has that burn and she says, I'm too busy doing your job. Oh, yeah? Where I put, that's why I put, it's kind of a tough one because it's like, he kind of has a point because, like murders can be solved by other people besides Monk. Like, he's got to take a day off. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's, he's sick, and it's her job to take care of him. Not that he, not that she's his nurse, but she's his assistant. So if 
he needs her to do something, she's supposed to be there to do it. Yeah. And then just, and that's what I'm saying, it's a tough one because it's like, she is right and she is following her hunch like he always gets to do and she is doing his job. So obviously it's greater good that she's going after, but also when your boss tells you to do something, it's kind of like, uh, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't like the jump scare. You didn't really... It was just me and someone we were watching with. We were just both like, whoa. What's the jump scare? Uh, when Natalie is in the house. In the murderer's house. And then he comes up and behind I'm, her? And I'm just... Yeah. Oh, okay. And I was just trying to escape. I was just like, what the... You didn't like that? No. Why not? It scared me. Oh. I was like... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. I put dumb Natalie scheme going into his house. Yeah. Really? For one. For one. Then drop your phone. Oh, my God. Drop yeah. your phone. Okay. And then when she gets to the guy's landline. She doesn't call 911. She doesn't call 911. She, she calls Monk. She calls Monk on the other line. Oh, my. Like, okay, if you're putting him on hold, if you're putting the killer on hold, he's going to have time to do something else. Yeah. He's going to. Have silence on his end, and you're whispering. It's a rock book. Like, Natalie, come on. Natalie. Those are just big. Those are just big three dumb things that she does. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Also, I don't like. I'm pretty sure you remember this. I I kind of called the episode. I was like, hey, whoa, 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 pause. And then I, my first theory was dumb. And then I was like, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. And then I and then I fixed funny. it. So yeah. you did. What well, was it? But granted, it was right before the summation, though. So yeah. it wasn't like you, but in the first I 10 seconds monk. of the show, you were I like, monk. oh, I figured everything out. It was no, like, no, right no, before no. he was going to tell a summation. Yeah. I should be monk. Okay. Hire me, study. So basically you can right. figure out a crime as fast as monk can with the flu. Yeah. From bed. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's pretty good. Exactly. Okay. So are you ready or do you have something else? Nope. I'm ready. Okay. Out of 10, what? Out of 10, monk humidifiers and dehumidifiers yeah okay and i'm going to put out of 10 level checking levels of course that one's easy but you have to it's cool. i'd let you out it's cool. okay so out of 10 level checking levels what did you rate this episode i rated it an 8 out of 10 okay i have an 8.25 yay so mm-hmm. easy mm-hmm. nice and easy mm-hmm. very very solid episode Season 4, Episode 4. Mr. Monk goes to the office. In the opening scene, we see a parking garage attendant who is suspicious of someone bending down to fix a tire. When the attendant confronts the man, he gets shot and thrown under a nearby truck. Then we see a businessman named Warren Kemp heading to his car when the assailant reappears and demands that he stick his right hand in the car door and slams it shut. When the gang is on the scene, they are confused as to why one man was killed while Warren was only injured. Monk goes undercover in the office where Kemp manages stocks and trades. They assume Warren is involved but are even more confused when the decorator who has been feng shuiing is killed also. When Natalie and Monk eat lunch across the street, Monk solves the case. A man with a hearing aid sitting next to them apparently had been reading their lips. Monk sees that he's been watching Warren Kemp from this table all week and must have been reading his lips as well. He had been getting all kinds of insider information but had a problem. Warren had been rearranging his office and moved his desk to the other side of the room. The man broke his hand to make Kemp hold the phone with his other hand. Then, when the decorator was going to put up curtains in the office, he had to kill her to preserve his money-making view. Monk and Natalie leave the office empty-handed, but restore order before they do. Okay. What did you like about this episode? Honestly, this is one of my faves. I like the return of the note cards. We've seen the note cards before. Have you seen the note cards before? Yeah. Okay. We see the return of the note cards where he's talking to the guys about football and he gets his San Francisco 49ers <laughs> card, not the Niners, the San Francisco 49ers <laughs> football cards. And he's like, oh, the quarterback, so-and-so, he did this and he scored and he just has to keep going back and get his, his cards. It's sad, it's so but funny, it's funny. And then he also has a card called Swear Words. <laughs> and then... Yeah, that's that's the note cards. That's I love the note cards so much. When Monk and Natalie are going to like interview Warren Kemp, Natalie and Warren Kemp start flirting. 
And I just love Mug's face. He's like, mm, what's going on here? Around 10 mm. minutes. Go check it out. It is so I wrote funny. it down. You did? Yeah. It's so I didn't funny. write down the exact time stamp because I didn't want to give it away while Noah was watching it. But I looked at this about 10 minutes. Just start watching at that scene. So and Mug's funny. face is completely it's and utterly so priceless. Funny. It is hilarious. He just has like this like resting like, really? face. <laughs> it's so good. It's so, so good. Oh, yes. I love how Monk is so excited to be a drone. Another number, just like everyone else. Natalie. Natalie's like, this is so boring, Mr. Monk. Blah, 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 blah. Monk's so happy. She's like, you're just another number. He's like, just another number. Like, just like everybody else. And like, just like everybody else. <laughs> you're basically a drone. A drone? <laughs> <laughs> so that's funny. And then... Obviously, all the other things that Monk is so excited about in the office. He loves his desk. He loves to organize cabinets. He likes to clean other people's desks. He likes to make reports and collate. And then, of course, you know, he's excited to go to lunch. It's the sweetest thing. I like my last thing. Oh, my goodness. Because it doesn't... It, this kind of ends, but... Monk has friends. He doesn't need the note cards for a short period of time. Yeah. Tell this episode breaks my heart okay so i'll continue with my lunch scene so the girl who's really nice to him right she's just kind of offhandedly saying oh we go to lunch downstairs around the corner and then monk's just kind of standing there like oh that's cool and she starts to walk off and then she's like come on adrian let's go it's so funny and then <laughs> and monk turns around he's like come on annette let's go <laughs> Oh, it's so cute. He's he's already acting like he's one of the gang, and then he is a part of the gang. And then he eats his fake nachos because he Aww. doesn't want to stick his hand in the thing and eat, you know. He's allergic to food that's been sitting in a bowl that other people have been touching, so he can't do that. And then he catches the couple sneaking, the two people. He's like, oh, how long have you guys been dating? And they're like, what? And he's like, oh, yeah, because he's obviously, you're wearing his shirt, and you guys came in together or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, uh. <laughs> it's so funny. And so everybody laughs, like, because that could have been a moment where they're like, really? Yeah, like, like really? Weirdo. But they were like, oh, Adrian. Yeah. Like, oh, it's so funny. I mean, this is probably my favorite. This is this is one of my favorite episodes because of how big Mr. Monk genuinely is laughing. It's not a fake laugh. It's yeah. not for a picture. It's not whatever. He laughs so big. And then Natalie even sees him from across the way. And it's like, oh, look, there's my boss. He's laughing. And like, you could tell. And no sound because it's from across the way. And he's just so genuinely happy. I love it so much. I know it's short-lived, but... It just gives you, it still gives you yeah. hope, though, that, you know, he can be normal. He can uh -huh. have friends and fit in with people and stuff. So, I don't know. Yep. So, you're already on your last one. Oh, I'm or already you're, done. You're already done? Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, I'll just go quickly. Human Caucasian buttocks. <laughs> okay. Bowling, Monk's perfect sport. Goal is to knock down exactly 10 pins. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, could you make a more perfect sport for Monk? Yeah. And then... Creepy monk smile summation. Because you can figure out that the guy is reading what. <laughs> so he's smiling really big. And then, and then Natalie's like, Mr. Monk, your smile, it's creepy. And he's like, well, I have to. And she's like, yeah, but it looks like you were involved in some industrial accident. <laughs> <laughs> and then also my big overarching thing would be I actually love the lip reading. I think that's a really clever way. Yeah. I think that was really clever because I remember towards the beginning uh, whenever they kind of were making you suspicious of Chilton mm -hmm. you made a comment and said oh gosh I hope this isn't something stupid and yeah. because they were building it up like oh it might be Chilton so you said oh my gosh I hope this is something stupid like implying I yeah. hope it's not him so I'm glad it wasn't him mm -hmm. and I'm glad that it was something clever now it was completely out of left field because we had never seen that guy before yeah. but still the lip reading thing was very clever it was one of the times that I didn't mind never knowing or never having seen the guy before yeah so that was that was it for what I liked okay so I'm just gonna go take over dislikes oh jeez Everyone's mean to Monk in this episode. Besides his little gang for like three seconds, everyone is mean to Monk. The cops, 
and the gang at the end, everyone. Everyone is mean to him. It's sad. Since you have that, I'm going to start off with the reason that they're all mean to him is just a bunch of baloney. Because Monk, he's been playing with his shoes the entire time. Now, once it's the final frame, then he has to put on new shoes, bowling shoes. Like, if that was such a hard rule, then he should have just been either completely disqualified, like, from the beginning, or it wouldn't have mattered and he could have just used his own shoes. Yeah. Like, you can't say, like, oh, well, this is the score you have up until now. Well, now we notice that you don't have shoes, so now you can't, pl- like, really? Yeah. That's And so it's like, really, Monk has never bowled before, mm-hmm. so he didn't know he needed bowling shoes. They could have rented him shoes like they were supposed to. Mm-hmm. Like He would have had to have rented shoes when he got there. Yeah. It's either their fault for not getting him shoes or it's Chilton's fault for being such a booty. Yeah. You know? So it's like, uh, yeah. I also didn't like everything in this episode is dead quiet. Yeah, it was, it was kind of strange. All you can hear are the characters talking, like me and Candace right now, like everyone talking at intervals and no background noise. Yeah, it was really weird. There was it, it was whenever they were in the garage. Yeah. And there's people like walking around and like walking in front of the camera, but you can't hear them walking. You can only yeah. hear them talking. So yeah, it was kind of a weird mix on that, I thought too. Yeah. Okay, smashing the hand. I hate when they smash the guy's oh, hand. That's, that's so gross. gross. Obviously, I'm sad when he can't fit in with the guys, when he uses the note cards. Yeah. Um. Okay, this one's kind of silly, but the birthday fun, let me ask you before I say it. Is that right? If somebody shows up and it's their first day of work, would you ask them no. to donate money that to someone creep, they've never though. met? That guy's a weirdo. I know, I'm just saying in, I'm just saying in general. No. No. Never. Like, there was a Friends episode that was kind of premised on that. Like, Ross had just moved into an apartment building, and they're like, hey, we're collecting money for the maintenance man. He's worked here for 20 years. And he's like, yeah, but I just got here. And they're like, but you live here now. And I was like, okay. So I was just always thought that was messed up. Yeah. And so that kind of reminded me of that episode. And so I was like, no, dude, that's just messed up. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have anything else? Nope. Okay. So my last thing is that... Warren Kemp was mad at Natalie at the end. Oh, yeah. That was so lame. What a dirt What man. was she supposed to think? She had never in her whatever, however many years ago it was, had never told anyone that secret. And as soon as she tells him that in confidence, it's spread around the office. Yeah. What is she supposed to think? And then, and then, after Natalie and Monk both take down the guy mm-hmm. in the restaurant. Yeah. Like... They were kind of heroic. Like, Natalie was, like, screamed in his ear. Monk had the gun pointed at him. Uh But everybody back in the office did not care at all. Mm -hmm. They were all still salty because they lost their bowling game. What little idiots. I wish they didn't go across the street for Chinese food. So that way they could have saw that and been like, whoa, what the heck? Oh, that was ridiculous. Okay, let's rate it. Out of ten what? Out of ten... Office signs. You remember the sign that was, it's like, you don't have to be crazy to work here, but it helps. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's four to ten. Okay. That's me. A four to Okay. So I'm going to do out of ten invisible nachos. Oh, <laughs> You're just so, always so much better than mine. <laughs> I, invisible I, nachos. I think about it. I, I think good. about it a lot. So um, out of ten invisible nachos, I'm going to do 8.5. Because I like this episode. I think this is one of the happiest times we ever see Monk. And so I know that he goes back down. But he's very happy. So. That's so sad. I don't like this episode. They didn't give us any closure. They could have been like, oh, Monk, we heard about what you did. Like the office people. They, yeah, they should have done that. They they they, sh- they definitely should have done that. I <sighs> think. Yeah. Agreed. Totally agreed. All right. Let's move on. All right, season four, episode five, Mr. Monk Gets Drunk. Okay, so this is Mr. Monk Gets Drunk. In the opening scene, we see Al Nicoletto in the apartment of Rudy Sish. He's asking Rudy, where's the money? He knows Rudy and his partner stole $3.1 million, so he shoots him in the leg to get more info. Rudy says his pal Ben Gruber has the money. 
Nicoletto picks up a postcard on the dresser from Ben that reads, Sit tight, I'll call next week. Nicoletto believes Rudy is telling the truth, so he shoots him dead and flips over the card that reads, Greetings from San Francisco. Next, we see Natalie and Monk arriving at a winery slash inn where Monk visits yearly on his anniversary. Monk spends his first evening alone in the lobby where he meets some interesting characters, including a man named Larry Zweibel, who takes his ticker meds and reeks of aqua velva. When Monk takes a sip of wine and gets drunk, Zweibel offers him a surefire cure for a hangover. Monk goes to get it in the morning, but can't find him anywhere, and no one else seems to acknowledge his existence. Until Alan Gruber, a.k.a. Al Nicoletto, shows up looking for his brother Ben, a.k.a. Larry Zweibel. Zweibel was the other partner that stole the $3 million. Monk assumes Zweibel paid the hotel guests off, but changes his mind once he figures Nicoletto out. He now assumes Zweibel had a heart attack and the hotel guests took the money for themselves. He calls the captain but is so drunk he barely gets through his summation. Natalie delivers the proof when she finally figures out the weird aftertaste in her wine. Aqua Velva. They find Zweibel in a wine vat and Nicoletto and the hotel guests are all locked up. Yay! Good episode. That was Mr. Monk Gets Drunk. Mr. Monk Gets Drunk. The last time we ever saw Will and Kate go. This is true. I really like the postcard intro. Oh, yeah, you did like that. You were like, that was was so so cool. cool. He flips over the postcard that says, Greetings from San Francisco, right? He flips it over, and it's the opening for the Monk theme song. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. I really like it. It is. I like when they check in, and it's revealed that Monk had ruined the murder mystery (laughs) from the year before. And it's kind of like the clue game. Where they do that uh-huh. whenever he figures out the clue in, like, two seconds. Yeah. The old lady, or Sylvia Willis is mm-hmm. her name, is really nice. And also, I recognized her, but I don't remember what she's from. Yeah, I know. Me too. She's in, like, everything. If yeah, like. she's in She's, a lot like, of an stuff. old lady in everything. Yeah. I actually, I love the mystery in this one. That was my overarching theme. I That's thought really the Larry's good. Y. Bell thing was actually pretty dang good. And then also the... The bilingual and the pop thing, like the the, yeah. the reference. I really liked those two, which you caught it as soon as he said, you want some soda? Yeah. And you were like, oh, the other guy said pop. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I feel like they probably should have done that backwards, but it's still, I guess it would have been the same result. I also liked the sea, swirl, sniff, sip, and spit. Oh, Monk, yes. That was good. That is so funny. It's like, oh my, uh, what, what are we on now? See? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. So, how long is it going to take to get to, you know, number five? Uh, well, see, now they're swirling. Oh, my gosh. We're getting closer. Oh, my gosh. Now they're sniffing. Ah, stop. So, stop. so that's only two. That's only two away. Yeah, that's only two away. Sip. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. And Natalie's trying to take the camera, so he has to stay there. All right. And now we're on five. Spit. And they're all... Dunk, 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 and the little spit buckets. Yeah. And he's like, ah, oh, ah. He's just yelling. Yeah. He's like, ah. All squirmy. It's yeah. so funny. His little, he monks it out. He twitches. Yeah, he totally does. <laughs> um, I also like the foot wine. It's the foot wine. It's literally the only wine that Monk ever, ever drinks, and he doesn't even drink. Yeah. And it's foot wine. <laughs> and he could taste the toes. And in between the toes <laughs> the and the fungus. fungus. I'll make a letter. Like, yeah. yeah, you really can taste the fungus. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. It's messed up. Um, Monk is so close to Trudy, even though she's dead, and that's so sweet. Yeah. He's like, thanks for marrying me. Mm. What were you thinking? Oh, my gosh. I just so wanted to cry. Freaking sweet. Mr. Monk is drunk. Okay, so he's not even drunk when he says this, but he's trying to get Nicoletto to drink with him, and he's supposed to have the Uh non-alcoholic, and then he ends up getting the alcoholic from the dumb waitress, and he downs his first glass, and he's like, catch me if you can. (laughs) And then all the things that he says to Nicoletto, while Nicoletto is like stone cold sober, and he's like, you look like a moose. (laughs) I should call you Mr. Moose. (laughs) And then he's like, no, but really, sorry about the moose thing. (laughs) And then he's like, what was I going to ask you? And then he's like, oh, no, wait, what song is this? (laughs) 
with his forks. <laughs> just banging them on the table. It's so funny. And then... Oh. And then they cut away to, like, Natalie, I think, where she's finding the airline tickets, and it cuts back to him. Uh And Monk's just sitting back, relaxing, and he's like, I love this. Just two guys sitting in a revolving restaurant. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, no. Okay. I only have one more. Do you have anything else? Yes, I have a lot more. Oh, okay. Go for Um, it. Who doesn't love the kissing fern, to be honest? (laughs) Oh, you know, the kissing fern, yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's um, a, okay, sure. I'll, it's I'll a, go over there. It's a tradition. All newlyweds, you know, the uh, song. He goes, kiss me underneath the kissing fern, <laughs> baby, ooh, baby, <laughs> the hanging plant, the hanging plant. <laughs> so, and then Bug joins and he's like, ooh. ba dum dum That is really funny. Oh, oh and gosh. I also love Natalie. Monk's like, Natalie, can you break into his car? And Natalie goes, can I break into his car? Mm, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do. I love that one, too, every time. <laughs> oh, Toby. Toby, sit. Toby. Bad Toby. No treats for you. Ridiculous. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. All right, so my last one, of course, Monk's drunk summation <laughs> is completely epic. I like. I actually like the setup when they show Stottlemyre and Randy outside of the inn. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, Captain, you've got to see this. Muck's doing one of his summation things, and he's totally wasted. <laughs> it's so funny. And then Stottlemyre, he's like, Cappy, this is Captain Leland Stottlemyre. <laughs> Show him your badge. Yeah, yeah, show him your badge. And he's like pushing his hands away. He's like, show it. (laughs) And then they're like, okay, Monk, who did it? And so he's like, it's all of these people, all of them. And then he picks up the lamp and he's like, just look at them. (laughs) And then he's like, okay, they they don't really look like criminals, but they're criminals. (laughs) We're gonna we're gonna need a big old paddy wagon. <laughs> <laughs> and then he does his drunk hands. He sticks his hands up and he's like falling over. <laughs> it is way too good. And then he passes out and it's so, it's so good. It's so good. It's so funny. This episode is so funny. I'm done. Yep, so am I. Oh, uh, what did you not like? Okay. I felt like in the very first scene, um, not the very first, but the first scene where we see, you know, Natalie and Monk, I feel like Natalie makes kind of a big deal about the Kevin male thing. Like, it really, to me, yeah. it, it did sound like she was trying to shut him up. Yeah. And he's like, she's like, why would I lie? And he's like, to shut me up. People do that to Monk all the time. Yeah. And that she made a big deal like, no, Mr. Monk, we're partners now. I trust you and you trust me, blah, blah, blah. And you're like... Okay, but you did sound like you were trying to shut him up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't dislike anything. Really? Okay. Uh, let's see. So Natalie does that, and then she doesn't believe him. That was so messed up. Mm-hmm. Oh, you have to believe me. We have to believe each other. We're partners now. Blah, blah, blah. Mm, I did say that. Mm, yeah. I, I did say that. She's so like, annoying oh this episode. That was messed up. Ugh. But, however, she does stick up with him. Kind of, sort of, with a psychiatrist. And she's like, yeah. if my boss said he saw Larry's white bell, he saw Larry's white bell. Mm-hmm. And then the guy's like, oh, it's in the painting. And she's yeah. like, oh, crap. Yeah. Okay, BT Dubs, how did the psychiatrist know about the painting signature? I don't know. Right? So the guy, the guy has a heart attack, so they don't know where he got his name from. Yeah. Do you he, think he that... Just, do you they think actually they, notice it. He either noticed it or did he... Did they paint it on there after that? Oh, no. I was like, oh, they painted it. They right. Painted, they Which wasn't it. in the summation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Usually something like that would be like, and they made it look like he was lying, blah, blah, blah. Like, whatever. Yeah. My last thing was, okay, this is just annoying in general. As a person who does not drink alcohol, I don't, I, I find it kind of irritating when, I say irritating, it's just kind of rude. Like, I feel like, okay, um, 
Because especially when you go up to a bar and you don't know how to order things Mm -hmm. because you're not used to going to a bar and you order something that's virgin or you order something that's non-alcoholic and the waiters treat you like, yeah, I get it. You don't want any alcohol. And you're like, okay, I'm just trying to like make sure that it doesn't have alcohol because I don't know if I said it correctly or whatever. So Monk's like, so no alcohol, right? Like none, zero alcohol. And he's like, yeah, dude, I got it. So he's rude to him, and which I, I don't like that because yeah. that happens to me. And so I'm like, oh, gosh, it's so rude. And then, sure enough, the dumb waitress yeah. switches the bottles, and you're like, exactly. That's why I said no alcohol like 50 times because yeah. I wanted to make sure you did not give me alcohol. Yeah. And so the guy makes it all nonchalant whenever he should have told the waitress. Yeah. But instead, he was rude, and I was like, I get it. And he was rude. So that's my last Friggin thing about it. pity of it. Nevertheless, it was a good episode, so let's go ahead and rate it. Let's rate it, Candace. Okay. What would you... I would rate it out of 10 kissing ferns. Of course, of the kissing ferns. Duh. Classic kissing ferns. Shout out to Scrunchy Girl. Yep. I would rate this out of 10 bottles of foot wine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, did you already say your rating? No. Oh, okay. Um, I would rate it a 9 out of 10. Really? Let me see your notes. Did you change your mind? Maybe. You little changer. It was 7 out of 10. But then what? You looked at my paper? No. Oh, okay. Then what happened? Uh, you were, you made me laugh too much. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> okay, so out of 10 bottles of foot wine, I gave it an 8.25. Not too shabby. Not Another too shabby very solid season 4 episode, and that is actually our last one. Yep. We are done skis. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Toby, turn it off. Toby. Toby. Quiet, Toby. Oh, really? Thank you. You listen to her. He always does. Oh, my God. All right, guys. So that was it. 401 through 405. Yeah. We are We are finished. We're on to... Bigger and better things well, such as season five. Well, we got to do our season four recap, which we'll see well, next oh, week. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We'll do but, that. And then, yeah. we, guys, get excited because season five, oh. we are pulling out all the stops. Oh, my gosh. We're doing Every it. Every single freaking thing, you guys. So, we make sure. Are ready. Get ready for season make four. Make sure that you stick with Ending, us. finale. Yep. We're going to do some stuff in the recap, and then we're going to uh, hit season five. Hard and fast. It, yep. It's going to be great. See right, ya. Guys, bye. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Junk Monk Podcast. We'd love to hear from you, so please rate and review us wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, follow us at Junk Monk Podcast on Instagram. If you want to know more about Candace, she's at Hearted and Hard Hats on Instagram. And if you want to know more about me, Noel, too bad. Also, you can catch up on Monk with Amazon Prime Video. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. You'll thank me later.